Capricorn. Hello Capricorn, this is your June forecast for 2013 and this month things are changing a little bit for you. It's like back to work. Uh, not saying you didn't work in May, but May kind of seemed for you uh, a time where you could take a little time off for yourself or devote a little bit more time to your hobbies and those things that you love to do when you're off time. Uh, having fun is uh, really good for you Capricorns because you're so dedicated to work and your goals all year round, you know, it, it's your mental focus. So having had these planets here in May in your fifth house for, for fun and uh, hobbies and starting creative projects and whatnot, uh, also for your children, the, this is the, the house of children. So you might have had some more time or more activities or time spent pertaining to their needs, so to speak. So, but now it's back on track, back into the daily schedule. And your focus right now, Capricorn, I think you're going to like it. Um, because what I see you doing is pretty much rearranging your daily schedules at home, at work. Kind of like organizing or reorganizing, structuring so that you could work a little bit more efficiently in the, the weeks and months to come along. The more you do right now, focusing on this area, the the easier and lighter the workload will be for you down the road. And since you are always so dedicated at your goals, this will pretty much really behoove you getting into the nitty gritty of clearing up whatever clutter there may be or in your files or whatever the deal is for you, only you know. But June is uh, also kind of looking at uh, how you can uh, improve your your health and your diet, getting back on track with it. Um, you might be looking at how you can uh, boost your metabolism. Some of you are really wanting to do that, so go for it. It's that high-low carb diet, right? Um, so, and just getting out a little bit more out into the physical, you know, whether you don't have to start jogging and running if that's not your forte, but you know, just even walking around the block uh, will help a whole lot more too. Now we have Jupiter here in this very same space and it's been here for you since summer of 2012. And a lot of you have seen how it's been working for you. It's been behind you, supporting you, looking at these very same issues that we've been talking about, how to clear away whatever clutter, how you can make shortcuts to make sure you are at your most efficient. Um, but this is leaving now at the end of this month. On the 25th, uh, uh, it will be moving, ingressing into uh, Cancer, which will be a wonderful and positive, positive time for you because that's the area of love and romance and partnership and marriage, uh, all of those good committed things. But we're going to talk more about that next month. So you can expect this to really start turning around for you. But what's paving the way for this love and romance and this committed uh, relationship uh, area of your chart, uh, Mercury and Venus is already there moving in and uh, giving you, should I say, uh, a little uh, taste up front, okay? Mercury's breaking the waves and Venus is pretty much following along as well. Uh, setting the stage, it's you uh, might feel a, start feeling a little bit more romantic and dedicating some more time uh, to this area. And Venus goes through the seventh house once every year. This is the time for it throughout 2013. So of course we want to make the most out of all those good things that we can reap and those things that we can give out. Um, Venus in, in Cancer right now, Cancer is all about nurturing, uh, giving out that nurturing to the partner. It's also how you'd like to be nurtured in your own life, in your own romantic life. Um, so these things will come up. I see them um, being discussed and shared. Uh, if you've been holding back for whatever reason from 
expressing yourself or, or putting words on your own needs and that's not always easy to bring out there our own needs right uh, but but Mercury is going to be helping you here Mercury is in this very same uh, area so you'll find that it's easier to communicate with your partner this month and also uh, on the flip end of that you might also hear your partner in a little bit more of a flow of communicating to you too whatever his or her needs are as well so this is great and this is just the beginning of it next month it's going to become even larger but back to uh, where uh, the Sun is right now which is your sixth house this is the consciousness of getting back into shape catching up with the body needs not just the mental and emotional needs but your bodily functions Mars is here, and this is why I was talking about workouts. Uh, Mars is our drive, it's action, it, it gives you that extra, should I say, propellant to get out there. And uh, you might do it in a very diversified way because Mars is currently in Gemini. And Gemini doesn't like the same old thing all the time. <laughs> okay, so it, it's more about you finding different little ways of keeping that energy up. You can do the little uh, Dr. Oz speed run, you know, <laughs> standing still on the floor. Ten seconds of that will just get your heart rate up. That kind of thing. Small little micro bursts of energy rather than the long haul will work wonders for you. Absolutely. And then we have here uh, on the third uh, where Mercury's in, in talks with Neptune. Neptune? is your your hopes wishes dreams it's all those things that it can foresee uh the ideal inner landscape of where you could see where you're heading this is a great time for you to express it to bring this out and that same mercury is in the seventh house so where will you be discussing this ideal dream well it would be with your partner and uh mercury is also training saturn so it's not like talking about foo-foo marshmallow dreams here, you know, pie in the sky kind of thing. Uh, Saturn's coming in right behind it and anchoring it, giving it body, giving it weight, you know, allowing you to really come across in a very serious and authentic way. And yet at the same time, um, feeling it's okay to, to, to bring this out. It's the perfect time for it. And uh, just a couple of days later, once this is downloaded in his or her consciousness, on the seventh, Venus is coming into the very same degree where Mercury communicated on the third. Uh, and this is where you're going to start seeing, feeling results. Like, wow, it paid off. Whatever I brought out, it's paying off because that love is now coming to you. Uh, and that same Venus, like with Mercury, is also, since it's in the same degree, also going to be aspecting that Saturn, which is setting up new foundations, okay? So this is good. This is setting the trend for not only what you're wanting to, to reap, you know, throughout this week and next, but I mean, we're talking about you're setting up programming for this entire year, how you want your, your relationships uh, and romantic uh, issues to be at the, its highest possible skill. Okay, that's what Neptune is, the highest ideal. So that should be interesting. And it might be a little challenged also there on the 7th. There might be a couple of little, I won't say hiccups, but a kind of reiteration of what was spoken about, where, where Mercury is going to um, uh, oppose Pluto. That doesn't have to be a negative. Uh, in other situations, it could be. It could come out a little harsh, a little intense, a little projected. But not here. Why? Because Pluto is the key of transformation. So you'll see on the seventh, whatever you have brought up to your partner there on the third, whatever talks you had, Venus is now giving it back to you. It's feeding it back. Saturn is programming it, putting it into the new hardware. And this Pluto uh, Mercury is now turning the key and Pluto transform. Pluto is the magician. It goes way down deep into sub-levels of consciousness and to the cellular memory. So good for you guys. Great first week of June. Make it the most you can because here on the 8th, the very day later, we have the new moon of this month. 
And of course, that's when we want to plant our intentions. And it looks like you've had a whole week building up towards these new intentions, didn't you? Well, the new moon is not in the seventh house of love and romance, where Mercury and Venus is. It's in the sixth house. This brings us back around to how you um, can uh, create better routines, daily routines at home. You know, declutter, reorganize, or at work, how can you work more efficiently? How can you set up new system uh, folders and whatnot that, that can help you to move quicker through the, the day at work? So this is where your new moon intentions are. How can I improve my life to be, become more efficient? Then we have on the 11th, Venus here, which is again in the uh, seventh house. It's gonna oppose uh, Pluto. So it's bringing back up the communication issue with uh, Pluto. We're, we're you know, turning that key, getting in there, solidifying, you know, eliminating the old patterns and starting these new patterns, just like Mercury did with Pluto. It's like really putting things into writing, carving it in stone, which is really great for you uh, Capricorns because you're ruled by Earth, you know. So now it's Mina's turn to get into that same degree to Pluto and really start launching, feeling the depth, how, how things are turning around, how both of you magically now can intensify the experience of your relationship and I think for those of you who have been dating for a period of time wondering whether something's going to happen or not well I'm looking at uh, here July really coming in for those of you ready to tie the knot or to expect some kind of proposal to come in because June is paving the way for you like I said it's breaking the waves but when Jupiter gets in there you know, it only visits this area once every 12 years. It's going to stay here for an entire year. So a lot of you Capricorns may, between now and next summer, get the proposal you're, you've been waiting for, have the wedding that you have been waiting and hoping for. And, you know, most of you Capricorns, you're, you're not that blasé, you know, wanting to have the, the Gedegan, as we say, these huge weddings. But with... Jupiter there, let me tell you though, it likes everything that's extra grand. You know, it loves big, beautiful, plush, gorgeous, you know. So, so you can see how that may be expanding and changing in your mind between now and then. So very romantic here for you uh, Capricorns this month. And uh, then we have on the 12th and 14th, uh, Venus is going to square or challenge Uranus. Um, and I think that really has to do with what happened earlier in the month. Venus is what we love, it's what we value, it, it, it's what you want to hang on to. And Uranus is what splits us away from what no longer works, okay? So now you've had time to program, put in there things. And now in order for all this new to take effect too, we kind of let go of some of the old stuff, you know, the old ways of thinking. Uh, so this will come up and it will be extremely healing by letting go. You're in fact empowering yourself by letting go of the old thought patterns connected to relationships. Okay, because that was back then. Remember, you've rewired your, your onboard by your computer and heart now, all right? So this means that you've got to set yourself up for thinking and feeling and expecting a little differently than in the past and this is what becomes extremely healing when Venus also trains Chiron here on the 14th. So you know you got two days there Venus and Uranus uh, on the 12th and then Venus and Chiron on the 14th. Then we have a lot of activity coming in for you here uh, 17th with Mars which is your, your drive and your action-oriented self, uh, putting some oomph behind even more shedding because Uranus is also here, like with Venus, in the picture to let go of the old, but also to, to watch what's going to speed up and accelerate for you because Uranus acts quickly. It's like lightning out of the sky. So things can manifest for you, boom, there on the 17th, uh, coming from your partner 
also actions that might even surprise yourself with things that you may do. And wonderful aspects coming in right behind it, Sun and Jupiter conjunct hand in hand, which is you, the Sun is always you, uh, the essence of who you are, and Jupiter will always be very generous and abundant and happy-go-lucky uh, and bestow upon you a feeling of great sensation here on the 19th. And then on the 20th, Mercury and Venus are conjunct, continuing this beautiful romantic talk, uh, the hand-in-hand -hand dance, and it's right there because the sun is still conjunct Jupiter. This could be the day for a proposal, a beautiful day, for example, for a proposal. No kidding, okay? But don't get disappointed if it's not here yet because there's more coming in next month, and remember, it's going to be with you for a whole year. Now on the 20th, the sun enters into this area of love and partnership. This is the same day that Venus is having the talks with Mercury, you know, this very love and romantic uh, stage. And uh, Jupiter is following in behind it just five days later on the 25th. So that means that Jupiter is conjunct to the seventh house. The sun has already gone into the seventh house. Mercury and Venus is having these love and romantic th uh, talks. So, you know, yeah, that week, proposal. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised. I want to hear about it, though. <laughs> and then the 25th, as Jupiter does go into uh, uh, Cancer, uh, the Sun is also trining Saturn, so that's setting something in stone, really putting things tightly together in, in a very authentic and serious manner giving it structure, giving it grounding uh, for you. That will be between your 6th house and your 11th house. So uh, I think that is also perhaps, you know, the area of friendships is going to now know where you're at, what's happening to you in your life. This might be you going out there saying, hey, look at what we did. We tied the knot. And of course, 7th house isn't always just love and romance. Uh, as in marriage, but it's also with whoever you um, work with, partnerships. So all of this, instead of thinking of proposals as if in uh, marriage, think about proposals also as in contracts, doing JV, joint ventures with somebody, partnering up, creating new business. It would be the same thing here. The dates are exactly the same for that. You could see a partner of yours really coming in with a huge contract or you being the one presenting a huge contract in whatever this joint venture partnership is. So um, regardless though, you just don't want to sign anything here on the 23rd when Mercury goes retrograde. And if you can avoid it, you know, the week up to it, that's good. But at least as long as you, you don't do anything here from the 26th, did I say 23rd? It is the 26th. Mercury is going retrograde and it will stay there for three, three and a half weeks. So in that period, even if you hear about something new, new contracts coming in, buy some time if you can and say you will revisit with them and do your signing late July, okay? That's just my best advice to you, especially because whatever is in the mix here seems to be good, seems to be big. You don't want to mess this one up by a retrograde, which will delay things, open up for miscommunications, and you'll see it will behoove you at the end of July because between this retrograde start on the 26th and after the retrograde, there's more information coming in that isn't in place yet. If you had signed, well, you'd already signed and you might have lost out at a couple of good other extra uh, niches in this contract. Whereas end of July, these negotiations back and forth will still take place and it will pan out for you. Now also here, around the same time here on the 23rd, we're having a full moon. Therefore, not a good time to sign these uh, contracts because the full moon here is conjunct with Pluto. So it's going to be an intense uh, full moon. 
this falls into your first house of yourself, your personality. There's intensity, there, and there's all of this extra excess energy from the full moon eclipse of last month, which is still riding with us, still coloring us. So it's empowering this full moon. Uh, and for you, having this in your first house, first house and everything else going on in your seventh house, you know, all this partnership thing, is really the universe asking you to look at what Capricorn is important to you. What is it you want to transform as far as yourself, your persona, your standing, your goals? Um, look at what you've been working for, you know, to the past year, not just the past few months. What have you been working on as you've been climbing this steep hill for years? What is it you really want now from this coming in? So therefore, don't sign this full moon's 23rd, Mercury retrograde in 26. You may be very tempted to sign because it's like you're already feeling that what you've been working so hard for is already here now and you want to kind of capture it before it goes away, right? But it's not going to go away. Um, then we have Venus. I'm going to conclude that with it. Uh, Venus is going to move into the playful sign of uh, Leo here on the 27th. Now, for you, your Leo is in the 8th house. Once again, it has to do with royalties and commissions. And I'm thinking for those of you working on any project, any contractual co uh, projects right now, um, here at the end of the month, here we come. We're going to start talking about splits and commissions and who gets what, where. And remember the, the Mercury retrograde. All that news is still not up front, even if you sign. So this is what's going to be going on here throughout the end of June through July until Mercury starts moving direct again three weeks into July. And then it's going to take another additional week to 12 days to get out of its shadow. So if you can wait to the beginning of August, nothing more will behoove you, especially because Venus rules money. It's in the money house of other people, meaning they're actually... Hmm, Maybe setting the bar on what the, the split and the commission and percentage will be for you. So you want to look out for your good in the long run. Um, yeah, that is pretty much what I do have for you here. We got Saturn in the 11th. We've talked about that, which is, you know, groups that you're working with. It is not doing all that much. It's laying in the background. It's sleeping. It's retrograde. It will be moving forward here uh, sometime later this summer. Um, but it is in talks uh, here on the uh, 3rd and the 7th. But uh, besides that, until the 25th, not much going on. But the 25th is important because your sun is connected to it in, in, in a positive aspect. So I wish you the best. It's always good talking to you, Capricorn, and love hearing from you. Thank you for all your emails. And as you see, saw in the beginning, uh, of this video. We now have an app, so now you can download it directly and see these videos from your phone. So we're excited about that. So I'll let you go. Just watch your moon sign and rising sign on the way out Capricorn, and I'll see you next month. Bye now.